Member for Logan, I call the Member for Bonnie, thank the you, esteemable Deputy Member for Bonnie. Oh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I rise to contribute to the cognate debate on Appropriation Bill No. 2 Parliament and Appropriation Bill No. 2 2019 as a member of the Economics and Governance Committee. We have bills before us that approve expenditure blowouts of this government on top of the 2018-19 state budget of almost $1.4 billion. Certainly not what I would describe as standard, as the member for Logan just said. It is a staggering amount of money, but this sort of unforeseen expenditure is nothing new for a Labor government. Last week they marked five years in office, and in that time over $4.1 billion has been appropriated on top of the budget for unforeseen expenditures. This shows they cannot control their spending and they have consistently shown they can't manage money. As we've heard from the Shadow Treasurer, this is eight times higher than the previous LNP government, and it is leading our economy to an ever-worsening debt. That is a debt that is now predicted to hit almost $92 billion in 2023, another billion dollars higher than when the Treasurer predicted it only mid last year. Almost 90% of the unforeseen expenditure was by three departments, the Department of Transport and Main Roads, the Department of Local Government, Racing and Multicultural Affairs, and the Department of Education. If we look at the Department of Transport and Main Roads alone, the overspend seems to be under budgeting on their part. Only $37.6 million was for disaster recovery. That's just over 10% of the total unforeseen expenditure. $84 million extra was needed to supply eight next generation rolling stock trains, which not only seems like an extraordinary amount of money, but you also have to wonder why it was unforeseen. People are starting to notice Labor's mismanagement. The Curry Mail marks Order. five years of the Mail marks five years of this government with their excellent state of dismay reporting last week, showing that only 16% of people thought the government's handling of the economy was good or excellent, and a huge 43% of the people saying it was weak or poor. From the Brisbane Times as well last week, we saw them speaking that in the last two years, expenses have grown by 11% to $7.3 billion, while the government has only been able to grow its revenue by $4 billion, 6%, despite all their new taxes that they're bringing in. That was based on a recent Auditor General's report the Queensland Government State Finances 2018-19 Results of Financial Audits, Report 11, 2019-20. In that report, the Auditor General said the financial performance of the Queensland Government has reduced over the last two financial years, with expenses incurred increasing at a greater rate than revenue. And further, that this year the Queensland Government reported a net operating deficit of $1.1 billion for the total state sector. While the Queensland Government has continued to grow its revenue, this has not kept pace with the growth in expenses over the last two years. All of this is happening in the context of unemployment being out of control. In my electorate of Bonnie in particular, we've now got over a thousand more unemployed people than when I spoke to this budget in 2018. We're now up to 9.6 per cent unemployment in my electorate, and whatever jobs the government say they're creating, they're certainly not helping our part of the Gold Coast. People are crying out for work, and in many cases it's out of their control, and they're suffering because of the mismanagement of our economy under this government. At the committee hearings on this bill, we heard Treasury officials explain how, while these bills are about unforeseen expenditure, this occurs within the context of a number of agencies that spend less than what was approved in their original appropriation bills. This is detailed in the Consolidated Fund Financial Report, which outlines how each department spent their appropriation from the Consolidated Fund for the financial year and outlines why any differences might have occurred, including lapse appropriation in 2018-19. The problem I have with this is that much of the budgeted money was underspent in areas that need it most. The Department of Housing and Public Works, for example, underspent by $224 million. When I'm looking at the rising homelessness in my area, where every park and every bit of bushland is full of people doing it tough, it's incredibly frustrating to know that Gold Coast Youth Foyer was funded in this budget two years ago, but work has still not begun. The government had plans ready to go in a block of land on the corner of Smith Street and High Street in Southport, slated to have 40 units for young people uh, at risk of homelessness. It was supposed to be open in December last year, but still nothing has happened. Why are projects that are needed desperately delayed, and yet this overspend is so drastic? Queenslanders need a government who can manage their money. We've got rising debt, rising cost of living, unemployment figures in desperate need of a reduction, and a government who has unforeseen expenditure of $1.4 billion. It's not good enough. We deserve better, and we can make that happen on October 31 this year. Thank you, Member for Bonnie. I call the Member for Bonnie.